Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, I'm Roger Sutton, so I'm just going to try and um, keep things moving and, I guess, keep everybody dry. So, but with that, I, rather than just, um, I'd just like to introduce the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Key. Roger, thanks very much. Uh, look, can I just acknowledge uh, all my ministerial colleagues who are with me this morning, um, all the dignitaries. But look, primarily we're here today to mark the start of the Metro Sports Facility here in Christchurch. And um, in the end, this is going to be a place where Cantabrians come uh, both to get the skills to be able to compete on a world stage, uh, but also for families to come along and spend a Saturday morning swimming in the pool or taking the kids for uh, some other sporting activity. Sport, in my view, is hugely important both to New Zealand as a country, uh, to communities, to families, uh, but right across the spectrum, we like to see our sports people do well and compete on the world stage. And if we're going to see them being successful at everything from uh, playing rugby right through to the Olympics or Commonwealth Games, then they have to have the best sporting facilities and the best sporting uh, institution backing them up. They need the right sports people, the right uh, medical staff, the right dietitians, uh, you name it, they need it. And they need it actually in one place. And uh, we're starting to see that emerging around the country where we're seeing uh, places of excellence, uh, whether it's at Carapiro for rowing uh, or up in Auckland at uh, the AUT Millennium facility up there. So this is going to be a place that'll be uh, very important for a lot of elite sports people. But we also want... Um, uh, youngsters and families to be engaged in sport at every level. It's good for their health uh, and it's good for the community. We always say into sport and out of court and I think there's a lot in that. So um, in time, it'll be a great facility. Uh, today is uh, not that impressive in the tent, but I'm sure the finished product, Jerry, for 217 million will be value for money. <laughs> Or it better be, uh, otherwise you'll be spending a lot more time here and a lot less time in Wellington, if you know what I mean. But uh, you'll get through it, son, you'll be right, don't worry. Um, but you know, you don't get much for 217 million these days, do you, clearly. Uh, but uh, in time you will, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, that, that's really the aim of it. And um, you know, sport, if I can only make one of the last points, I, th I think sport's hugely important for Christchurch, as someone who's grown up here. Cantabrians love their sport. They do well at it, uh, and we've produced some of the greatest uh, sports people uh, from this region, and we just have to give them good facilities that they can go to, train, and aspire to do well on the world stage. And this afternoon, I'm going down to do the sod turning at the Hagley Oval. Um, you know, I was reading in the press as I was driving here that that's controversial, and I know that it is. But in reality, actually, again, if we want to host those big events here in Christchurch, and the government certainly does, we just need those facilities. This is a city that missed out on Rugby World Cup through no fault of its own. Uh, but if there isn't the Hagley Sports uh, Oval uh, for cricket, it'll miss out on the Cricket World Cup. And I don't think that's something Cantabrians would want to see uh, pass them by. Uh, so whether it's here at the Metro Sports Facility or ultimately down the road, uh, we've got to provide the facilities that this city can um, embrace and enjoy. And it's a vital part of the rebuild and reconstruction post the earthquake. Uh, so that's, that's enough for me. I think there's a video that's going to play. Is that right, Shrek? And then we're going to be away. OK. Jerry and I have had the haircut, and Roger's uh, made up for the two of us with more combined haircut <laughs> here than the, than the two of us here. And Tony, actually. We can throw Tony in, but that doesn't do much to the overall average. <laughs> You can see that we're moving into Christmas quite rapidly here in the government. But anyway, on that happy note, we'll play the video. I'd like to now introduce um, the driving force behind this, my minister, Jerry Brownlee. Uh, <laughs> well, Prime Minister, firstly, can I thank you for your very kind and encouraging remarks. Um, <coughs> I'm going home to get my gum boots and nail pocket <laughs> so we can get uh, done by Christmas. Um, can I acknowledge that uh, City Council is also here as well as my parliamentary colleagues, ministerial colleagues. Uh, it is an important day for us and one of the things that's unique about Canterbury is the number of people here who quite openly and, and willingly and, and uh, uh, quickly will say that they're involved in sport at either a, a leisure or competition level. It's actually 8 out of 12 people and if you think about the demogra demographic of a population that's an incredibly high number quite unique in New Zealand. The Cantabrians without doubt do love their sport uh, and it is something that I think we uh, do mark ourselves out on, whether it's cricket or rugby. 
uh, or netball or any other sport you like to name. Uh, we like to think that we're in the best of what's on offer in New Zealand, if not also internationally. And you see those athletes who are speaking there who all have uh, reputations internationally. I think Shane Bond's comment to me was the one that resonated the most. He said, I just look forward to going down there and playing a bit of basketball or uh, whatever with my kids having a swim. Uh, that's the sort of attitude that so many parents here in Christchurch have. And it's backed up by the um, what is estimated to be about 124,000 volunteers who keep our sporting communities alive uh, through the various seasons. So whether it's coaching or managing teams or even just carting kids around, it's a huge, big commitment that's made out of this uh, community. Given that our population is just on the 400,000, uh, that gives you an, a, a bit of an understanding of how many households are involved in these sort of activities. So for those who sort of uh, say, well, you shouldn't be doing this quite so quick, there's other things to be done, we are doing those other things, and we can demonstrate how quickly those are coming along. But we do have to plan. This will take a number of years to build, uh, but it will be world-class, it'll be quite unique in New Zealand, uh, and I think will be a great asset for Christchurch and allow so many other things to develop around it. So, Prime Minister, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for all the support that you've given so far. I've got to say, uh, the Cabinet, led by you obviously, has been incredibly willing to look at the situation here in Christchurch and make decisions in favour of this population. And uh, not only is the Prime Minister um, attending the sod turning here today, but also down at Hagley Park, uh, but on another level is attending with the Honourable Tony Ryle the signing of the Burwood Hospital contract, New Zealand's biggest ever hospital contract. A build is taking here in Canterbury, taking place here in Christchurch, I should say, should say, on both the city and Burwood sites. So a great day for us. And long term, we need to think very, very strategically about how we use that big block of red zone land that the government is acquiring. Uh, there are lots of opportunities there. I see John Wiley here. John, you've got uh, uh, your particular idea. Uh, I think we can solve a problem uh, and create a, a venue down there for water sports. We do have a flooding problem uh, and we've been very lucky. This sort of rain event that we're having now has been relatively thin on the ground for the last few years, but a big rain and a big tide and uh, we'll find out why we've got shingle stop banks down on so much of that river. They can't stay there forever. Uh, we have to solve the problem. So lots of opportunities in front of us, uh, lots of the public discussions I'm sure, but great to see this coming out of the ground uh, in the next few months uh, and I look forward to Prime Minister you coming back to cut the ribbon and maybe even swim the first length, dribble the first ball, <laughs> toss something over the hoop, all that sort of stuff. Th thanks very much for being here. So Ralph Manji is here from the City Council. Unfortunately uh, Mayor Dalziel couldn't make it so welcome Rafe. Um, thank you, everyone. Yes, the mayor sends her apologies, but unfortunately she had a long-standing engagement she was uh, unable to break. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Prime Minister for coming along um, and bringing a cohort of ministers. This shows how important um, this facility is to the city and also to the government. I think when we look at it in the long term, it will have national importance. Um, a high-performance hub as well as a recreational area for the city has um, lots of outputs which we may not have noticed so far. So for example, we have the Minister for Health um, and Information Technology here. Some of the data that we're gonna pull out of this center is gonna be very important for developing spin-offs in technology and innovation. We have the hospital and the medical school nearby. Uh, we have the innovations uh, precinct hopefully coming on stream soon. And there will be lots of business opportunities that come out of this and developing sport as business and research and development will also be important and that can be something that Christchurch uh, can be proud of. Obviously with the loss of uh, QE2 that was um, a big hole to fill and this is uh, you know this facility is very important to the people of Christchurch and we're grateful for government support um, in getting this going um, and we're very uh, proud as a council to be involved. Um, I won't really say more because I think everyone has said what needs to be said. Um, this will have great benefits for the city. It's really important to put a stake in the ground. It will be a great example of um, the government and council working together to deliver a major project. Uh, and we're very happy to be involved. Um, we're very grateful uh, for the government coming along today uh, and supporting and launching this. Thanks very much. So as you all know, this is just one of a number of um, gutsy anchor projects that we're driving at Sarah. And to give us an update on those projects, I'm going to ask Warwick Isaacs, who's been our 
lead in this whole area to give us an update for the next three or four minutes about how things are going with those projects. Welcome. Thank you, Roger, and good morning, Prime Minister, Ministers. And um, there are a number of folk in, in the room now who will uh, make sure that we get very good value for the 217 million and that Minister Brownlee does have a job going forward. <laughs> so we, we've heard today about this fantastic facility here and, and the team working on it are very excited about that. There's no question about that and looking forward to uh, it rising out of the ground. I just want to talk briefly around a number of the other projects we've got in the central city. This, this project, along with a number of those, are large complex projects and we've been working furiously this year to get the planning work done and the design work well underway for those. So I'll just talk about the Convention Centre. We've uh, got five people at the moment who are responding to a RFP, so a request for a proposal to um, build the precinct. So we're not just after the box here, that's the, um, that's the Convention Centre, but the actual precinct as well. So we're looking for people who will do master planning for that, who will help uh, the government finance that and deliver that with an opening date in uh, early 2017. The bus interchange, so it's about three blocks along the road from here. That is um, well underway in terms of design and we'll have a design signed off prior to Christmas for that with early works commencing early next year and main construction starting third quarter next year. That's an exciting uh, project as well. Obviously public transport has taken a bit of a hit with lack of facilities in Christchurch and the suburbs since the earthquakes and that certainly is an important project for us. The retail precinct is another project which is vital to the central city and the vibrancy and the activity that's required to have a vibrant and progressive central city. We've seen now the start of Anthony Goff's development uh, in the uh, retail precinct. That is called the Terrace, that's underway, and we certainly are expecting very early in the new year that there'll be more construction undertaken right next to Anthony and further into the retail precinct. Sarah has appointed Athfield Architects to lead a, a retail precinct plan. And so that we, we originally left this to the private sector. They've come to us said we actually need a bit of assistance about how we develop this retail precinct. So we have now appointed Athfield Architects to develop that plan. And what we want to have is the private sector work with us so that we make sure that we get the right mix of retail in there to ensure that precinct works and is viable for the tenants in there. Avon River Precinct, just two blocks to the north of us here. A number of you would have already visited the, the watermark, which was our first demonstrator of what our intention was in that area. It's 3.2 kilometres long. In the, early in the new year, in fact, I expect probably in the first week of January, we'll find that diggers move in to begin the silt removal and, and cleaning up the bed of the river. That will continue right through to July. And then our intention is to have the physical work completed around the terrace and retail precinct area in time for show week next week, uh, next year, not next week, I'm sorry. The other uh, comment I'd just like to make is around the east frame. That's an area where we'd like to see in the order of 1,500 to, to 2,000 city residents living in there in the future years to come. Our expectation is that we'll see the public realm development in that area uh, beginning in the first half of next year and we'll certainly have to the market some land available for development for residential purposes uh, very early in the new year. So finally I'd just like to, to say thank you to my team and the various teams who are working very hard in the central city and I uh, wish you all a very Happy and prosperous New Year and Christmas. <laughs>